I started for school very late that morning and was in great dread of a scolding, especially because M. Hamill had said that he would question us on participles and I did not know the first word about them. For a moment, I thought of running away and spending the day out of the school. It was so warm, so bright. The birds were chirping at the edge of the woods and in the open field back of the sawmill, the Prussian soldiers were drilling. It was all much more tempting than the rule for participles. But I had the strength to resist and hurried off to school. So here we still don't know who is this I. So probably I is one of the school student and that child is very late. He's supposed to, he or she is supposed to go and attend school, but he's already running late for that. And more than that, he's very dreadful. Dreadful means he's very frightened. That Why? Because some kind of homework was given to him or her by the teacher and the name of the teacher is M. Hamill. M. Hamill is the teacher and he had given a homework on participles to students and there is this one child who has not done any homework. He does not even know what these participles are all about. So he has no idea. He's absolutely clueless about the topic. Forget about doing the homework. And therefore, he's running late for the school and this thing is just going on in his mind that what if, you know, I don't know a single thing and I'm already running late and he was sure that he is going to get a good scolding from his teacher that is M. Habel. Now, while going to the school, he just thought he, uh, that that boy or the girl just thought that, you know, it is better that I don't attend school. Why? Because all these thoughts were already going on in his mind. And while he was going to school, it was already a beautiful day, bright, sunny day. It was warm and the birds were chirping early in the morning. The Prussian army was performing their drills and then um, they, were, uh, they were performing their drills in the open field which was at the back of sawmill. Now, sawmill is a factory where wood is being uh, cut. Factory cutting woods or a factory where woods are cut. So, this is a sawmill. So, looking at the scene, you know, uh, having this beautiful, warm, bright morning and the Prus looking at the Prussian army uh, doing their exercise and drilling, and this uh, noise or this beautiful sound of the birds chirping and on the back of that he's not done any homework he hasn't read anything he's already uh, scared and frightened that whatever his teacher is going to scold him that bad so he was just thinking that you know let's just skip school let's just stay out of the doors that is let's just not attend the school and just spend the entire day looking at this beautiful scene but it was all much more tempting than the rule of participles. So the child is saying that, you know, if, even if I go and attend school, I know that I'm going to read about the participles. And that rule of participles, th even thinking about that is not exciting me, is not uh, attract looking very attractive to me. Rather, I would spend my day out enjoying this beautiful day, beautiful scenery, beautiful things that I could witness. But I had the strength to resist, which means he decided, he or she, that no, I need to resist, I need to stop myself, I need to avoid getting such ideas that I can skip my school and rather I hurried off to the school. So the child took decided that even though he's not done his homework, he's going to get a bad scolding. So the child resisted, that is, he avoided thinking about this idea of skipping school and instead hurried off to school that is just quickly moved to his school so resist is to avoid right and more tempting is uh, attractive or more attracting right fine now when i passed the town hall there was a crowd in front of the bulletin board for the last two years all our bad news had come from there. 
the lost battles, the draft, the orders of the commanding officer. And I thought to myself, without stopping, what can be the matter now? Then as I hurried by as fast as I could, the blacksmith watched her who was there with his apprentice reading the bulletin called after me. Don't go so fast, bub. You'll get to your school in plenty of time. So now what happened? Now that the child is running away to school because he's already or she is already very late. So he, the child just crosses the town hall. And town hall uh, is basically a government building. So he just crosses the town hall and there he sees that, okay, there is a very huge crowd. A lot of people had gathered there. And outside what? Outside the bulletin board. A board on which some news was being put up so as the public so, so as to make sure that the public receives that news so if something had to be announced to the public it was put up on this bulletin board outside the town hall which was a government building it was a government building right and now while he was all he didn't stop there while he was running away to school he just looked at it that yes there is a large gathering and they were all reading and looking up to that uh, bulletin board but the child decided that why is it that people are standing there like what news is it today and then the idea came to his mind that from past two years all the terrible news all the sad news that he's been getting has already come from this very place this very bulletin be it the lost battles, be it about the draft, the orders of the commanding officer, etc. And now the child was wondering that now what bad could have happened that, you know, a crowd is there and they are all, you know, just getting to know about the news. And while he was just going away, there was a blacksmith there amongst the crowd and his name was Washter. The child was, uh, he just spoke to the child saying that, you know, don't go so fast, bub. Bub is basically was addressing the child, like, you know, don't go so fast, child. You will get to your school on time. So he was just kind of making a sarcasm there that, you know, you, because he everybody knew him looking at the time that he was running late, the child was late. So the blacksmith just said that, you know, uh, it's okay. You can just slow down instead of just running away so fast. You will be at your school on time. I thought he was making fun of me and reached M. Hamel's little garden all out of breath. Usually, when school began, there was a great bustle which could be heard out in the street, the opening and closing of desks, lessons repeated in unison, very loud with our hands over our ears to understand better, and the teacher's great ruler rapping on the table. But now it was all so still. I had counted on the commotion to get to my desk without being seen. But, of course, that day everything had to be as quiet as a Sunday morning. Through the window, I saw my classmates already in their places. And M. Hamel was walking up and down with his terrible iron ruler under his arm. I had to open the door and go in before everybody. You can imagine how I blushed and how you can imagine how I blushed and how frightened I was. So now the child he was already running away to school and it's been said that he just uh, you know when the black when the blacksmith told him that you know you just can just stop running you would reach school on time. So he did not stop there, he just was kept moving and the child also realized that probably the blacksmith was making fun of him, looking at the time because he was actually very late. And then by that time, you know, he was continuously running, he reached the Mr. Hamel, sorry, M. Hamel's little garden and he was all out of breath because he's been walking, running very uh, quickly so as to reach school on time. And then he was panting, that is all out of breath. And from there, the child uh, realized that usually on the days when he comes to school, there is a lot of noise. Children are going in, everyone is there and there are children getting inside the gate and a lot of noise is there of uh, students moving inside the school, talking to each other, playing around, moving the desks and chairs, etc. 
but while he was just catching his breath he realized that today it's being very uh, unusual something like too much of silence is there as if it was a sunday morning he could not see anyone getting inside to school no playing around um, and no uh, moving of desks and chairs no noise absolutely silence was there absolute silence was there and that's when he just looked at it uh, looked at the door and uh, through the window and realized that all the children are already there in their class they are already seated on their desk and the teacher that is m hamel is already walking in the class with his terrible iron ruler terrible is why because he is scared of that and probably the teacher used to scare the students away or probably hit them with this iron ruler so and he just realized that mr hamel is also already there in the class and he's carrying that famous uh, iron ruler with him and now he realized that probably his idea that even though he is not done his homework he's not read anything about participles he realized had it been like other days where there is too much of commotion that is too much of noise of too many things he could have easily escaped in that noise and reached his desk without the teacher noticing him probably but now that everyone was at their seats they started their lessons and the teacher was in the class everything was there was a pin drop silence therefore the child will actually have to open the door the teacher is going to look at him and there is no chance of him not getting noticed by the teacher right therefore it has been read that but now it was so still i had to i had counted like it is thought and had there been commotion that is noise and noise of too many things like i told you moving of desks children playing along with each other etc he thought that in this noise he could easily reach to his desk but now everyone was at their as was at their places ms m hamel was there in the class and now he had to go in front of everybody and the teacher is definitely going to notice but nothing happened m hamel saw me and said very kindly go to your place quickly little france we were beginning without you so little france so this is the young boy's name he was the child who was getting late to school and the name of this child is france but mr uh, so while he was looking at the site uh, you know from the window and he was getting scared about this idea that now m hamel is going to see him like this so m hamel actually saw him and he didn't really you know uh, scare him away or said anything harsh he just said that okay very kindly uh, he said that okay come inside go to your seat quickly i was about to start the lesson without you being in class so come hurry up be settled and settle down at your desk now i jumped over the bench and sat down at my desk not till then when i had got a little over my fright did i see that our teacher had on his beautiful green coat his frilled shirt and the little black silk cap all embroidered that he never wore except on inspection and prize days besides the whole school seemed so strange and solemn but the thing that surprised me most was to see on the back benches that were always empty the village people sitting quietly like ourselves old hossa with his three cornered hat the former mayor the former postmaster and several others beside Everybody looked sad and Hoza had brought an old primer thumbed at the edges and he held it open on his knees with his great spectacles lying across So what happened that when the teacher said that you know come on hurry up just go and settle down at your place so he just quickly moved in the boy Franz and he just settled at his place he was already frightened since morning he was already scared and when he settled down he took some time and when he actually came over that uh, you know fear that he's going to get scolded very badly maybe you know he'll be punished badly so he just looked at in the class and then he realized 
that his teacher today was dressed very fa- in a very fancy manner as if he was dressed for an occasion why because the teacher was wearing a very beautiful green coat he was wearing his frilled shirt and his black silk cap and that is when he realized that this is the attire or this is the dress that m hamel that is his teacher used to wear only when either on two uh, occasions either there when there was an inspection in school or when there was a prize distribution ceremony but uh, the child realized that today nothing was supposed to happen like nothing like this was supposed to happen so he was just wondering that you know uh, why is he dressed up so uh, nicely today and that is when he looked around in the class and he saw that uh, today the back benches or the last benches of his class was also occupied which otherwise on other days had always been empty which means there were people who were not there and every time he walked down in the class franz saw that there were these desks these tables were always empty no one occupied but today there were people sitting there and who were these people they were the villagers and like the former mayor like the mayor who had been uh, the mayor of that place the like he was previously the mayor of that place so the former mayor was there then houseer was there then postmaster was there and many other village people were there and they were all sitting there very quietly just like the students of the class and he then noticed that either houseer had actually brought with him an old primer which was thumbed at the edges so what was this primer so primer is basically a basic reader book to learn language or to say in simple words that a basic book to start learning about language is a primer so he noticed that this primer uh, was there in the hands of the houseer and in fact that primer was so old that the edges of that uh, primer that book was actually being torn phate with his sketches right so primer is a basic book a basic book to learn language and thumb this torn torn at the edges so he was just wondering like you know since morning what all he had witnessed the crowd outside the town hall and a large crowd uh, gathered there looking at the bulletin board now the children here the at the behavior of the teacher seemed unusual to him and uh, there were so many people apart from the children who is were attending the class today so he was just wondering that what is the matter all about so while i was wondering about it all like all those things that i just mentioned he was just wondering about it M Hamel mounted his chair and in the same grave and gentle tone which he had used to me said my children this is the last lesson i shall give you the order has come from berlin to teach only german in the schools of elsace and lorraine the new master comes tomorrow this is your last french lesson i want you to be very attentive now finally when the child was just thinking about the strange activities since morning that is exactly when the teacher that is m hamel announced in his serious tone gentle tone that my children my dear students today the lesson that i am taking is your last french lesson why because now in the french districts of lorraine and elsace in these french districts there has been an order that now french language is not to be taught rather the only german language is to be taught in the schools of these two district so imagine the country these two are a part of france the language is french and now just because france was defeated in the war against prussia therefore from berlin which is the capital of prussia the order was there that in these two districts from now on in the schools the french language shall never be taught 
rather it is being replaced by a new language that is german right and then he also tells the children that from today from tomorrow a new teacher is coming to school and he shall be teaching you german as now french will not be taught in the schools of these places and hence i am going to deliver my last lesson in france uh, in the last french lesson today so you must pay very much attention to what i am teaching now what a thunderclap these words were to me on the wretches that was what they had put up at the town hall now he could join the dots and now he could recollect that what maybe okay probably this was the news that was put up on that bulletin board where he had seen early in the morning that a large crowd had gathered there and he realized that these words whatever his teacher just told him seemed to be like a thunderclap that is seemed to be like jolting him he could not believe what he just said my last french lesson why i hardly knew how to write i should never learn any more i must stop there then oh how sorry i was for not learning my lessons for seeking birds eggs or going sliding on the sar my books that had seemed such a nuisance a while ago so heavy to carry my grammar and my history of the saints were old friends now that i couldn't give up and m hamel too the idea that he was going away that i should never see him again made me forget all about his ruler and how cranky he was now this child could not believe that you know he would never be able to learn the french language now the very thing the very first thing that came to his mind and you know whatever feeling that feelings that he was going through was that my last lesson in uh, french so probably the first thing is that why is it affecting me so much not that i paid attention to this language not did i learn the lessons that was taught by m hamel not did i do my homework on time not did i you know uh, skip and, and 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 i skipped most of my french classes by either you know looking for birds eggs or uh, sliding uh, or going sliding on the sar that is a river in france so i actually skipped my classes and i always felt that this language or learning the language was such a task for me i was never very much inclined towards it and now in fact my books that i used to carry every day to school from home seem to me be a very much nuisance seem to be a very much burden some for me that i'm carrying a huge burden i was disinterested but today the very thought that you know that i had been thinking that my books the load that i'm carrying of all these books my grammar the history the language were uh, probably burden for me but now today when i'm getting to know that you know from tomorrow i will be having a new teacher a new language we will have to learn and our old teacher m hamel i would never be able to see him again uh, this language the french language that he was teaching us in so many years which is our language and now i will never be able to learn the language and he was thinking about all the times when he's actually skipped his classes not done his work and he was feeling very sad about it he was feeling very bad about it and in fact the bag in which he was carrying his books which he was saying that okay few days ago i was thinking that my bag is just a burden it's a nuisance but today it seemed to be like a old friend so all these emotions started coming in within the child and which all this made him forget that how scared he was supposed to be from his teacher or how scary did his teacher seem to him his iron ruler his scolding etc the very thought that he would never be able to see m hamel again was very much painful to him and then poor man it was in honor of this last lesson that he had put on his fine sunday clothes and now i understand understood why the old men of the village were sitting there in the back of the room it was because they were sorry too that they had not gone to school any more 
it was their way of thanking our master for his 40 years of faithful service and of showing their respect for the country that was theirs no more. So now it is being said that now he can just realize it why, you know, this man, now he started thinking about M. Hamill, that why, now, that why he is he so much dressed up today, because today was his last lesson. After this, he will not be coming to school, he would never be taking the French class here. And in, to honor, to give value, to make this moment memorable, he probably had dressed up in his best to deliver his last lesson. And now he also realized that why the last benches of his class were uh, occupied, why they were villagers, because all these people also never valued this language, the classes, and they've also been skipping the classes. But today, everyone is there to give value to the master, to give respect, to show respect to the master and the country where this teacher has served for more than 40 years. Imagine, 40 years he's been coming to school teaching that language and now suddenly he's being told that this language is not to be taught and you have to go away. So such a painful and a shocking news it was. While I was thinking of all this, I heard my name called. It was my turn to recite. What would I not have given to be able to say that dreadful rule for the participle all through? very loud and clear and without one mistake but i got mixed up on the first words and stood there holding on to my desk my heart beating and not daring to look up so finally the while you, all these thoughts were going on in the child's mind franz's mind finally he could hear that his name was being called out so he realized that, okay, everyone was, had started reciting and probably the teacher has called out his name as it was his turn to stand up and recite. And now he, already this thought had singed in whatever news was uh, given to the children and everyone by M. Hamill. So that thing was already sinking in. And at, at this point when his name was called out to just recite. So he realized that, you know, how he wished that he had learned the rule of participle and he could just stand up smartly and could have just spoken and just said that rule and uh, to make the teacher feel better not for himself but for the teacher he was feeling but now he just took up all the courage tried to be brave and decided to speak but he fumbled he got confused mixed up is confused or fumbled when he just started speaking the first few words and that's exactly when he stopped because he, could, he had not read, he did not know what participles were. He just started and then he realized that he did not know what to speak. And therefore, with shame, with fear, he just held his head down and he was not daring to look up to the teacher's face. I heard M. Hamill say to me, I won't scold you, little Franz. You must feel bad enough. See how it is. Every day we have said to ourselves, Bah, I have plenty of time. I'll learn it tomorrow. And now you see where we have come out. Ah, oh, that's the great trouble with Alsace. She puts off learning till tomorrow. Now those fellows out there will have the right to say to you, How is it you pretend to be French man and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language. But you are not the worst, poor little Franz. We have all a great deal to reproach ourselves with. So now the teacher also realized that, you know, the Franz is not looking up because of two reasons. First, he did not know what to say. And second, he was scared of the teacher. So, M. Hamill told him that, you know, uh, little Franz, you shall not be worried about the fact that I'm going to scold you. I am not scolding you. You know, why? Because you yourself should feel bad enough now. Why? Because we are always in a habit that, okay, we have plenty of time. Let's just do something else today and do this work tomorrow. So, this habit of, you know, uh, procrastinating, that is thinking that, okay, we have time, let's shift it to tomorrow and then 
from tomorrow to next tomorrow and probably for many of the people this tomorrow never comes so mr hamel m hamel is also saying the same thing that see you have always been saying that you have lot of time you have lot of time and you will do it tomorrow but now that tomorrow is never going to come why because el says that is this place is in great trouble and it has decided that from now on no tomorrow shall be there why because you is hinting in the fact that from tomorrow french language will never be taught you would be learning a new language so this tomorrow will anyways never come in el says so you should feel bad enough for this for not learning for not doing the work on time and more than this the teacher that is m hamel also told the boy that uh, you know just think when tomorrow people from outside that is from different country is going to come and you know they are going to teach you a new language that is german they can probably make fun of you as well saying that okay uh, you know why you you can easily learn a new language that is german because even if you say that you are frenchman do you know how to read your own language do you know how to write read or speak french if not then why does it matter to you that whether you are learning french or you are learning german so you should feel bad enough and after saying all this he says but you are not the worst poor little france we have all a great deal to reproach ourselves with reproach means that we all have to blame ourselves for something or the other so reproach is blame right now your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn they preferred to put you to work on a farm or at the mills so as to have a little more money and i i have been to blame also have i not often sent you to water my flowers instead of learning your lessons and when i wanted to go fishing did i not just give you a holiday so now when in the last paragraph we read that the teacher is saying that you should feel bad but you're not the worst because everyone is to be blamed and those everyone included here like he's saying the teacher is saying that even your parents are to be blamed because many times they used to they, they didn't send you to attend the classes rather asked you to work on the fields or on the mill why so that they could get that extra money earn extra money even he blamed himself that is m hamel is blaming himself that many times when i wanted to go for fishing i gave you all a holiday or many times i have even sent you to water my little flowers little garden so even i am to be blamed then from one thing to another m hamel went on to talk of the french language saying that it was the most beautiful language in the world the clearest the most logical that we must guard it among us and never forget it because when a people are enslaved as long as they hold fast to their language it is as if they had the key to their prison then he opened a grammar and read us our lesson so while you, the teacher was saying all this the teacher m hamel also said that you know he started glorifying the language the french language saying that the french language is the most logical most sophisticated most beautiful language of the world not just of france but he's saying this language all around the world if you see it's the most logical language it is the most beautiful and the most sophisticated language and it is clearest and we must we should have guarded it better everyone but now also even if we are being enslaved we must realize the value the importance of our own mother tongue of our language because it is the key to their prison we must protect our language we must protect of who we are in spite of the fact that we are being enslaved and then finally the teacher opened his grammar book and decided to and and read us the last lesson that is started delivering the last lesson in french i was amazed to see how well i understood it all he said seemed so easy so easy i think 
too that had I I had never listened so carefully, and that he had never explained everything with so much patience. It seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away. and to put it all into our heads at one stroke so now when the teacher started teaching franz realized that today whatever the teacher was teaching whatever he was saying seemed so simple and so easy he could understand every word of it and the child is thinking that you know today probably even he is also paying more attention to what the teacher is saying and even the teacher that is m hamel is also teaching with a greater patience because probably he is aware that he will never be coming to school again he would never be able to teach this language again so he just wants to give all his knowledge in this last class to everyone present there after the grammar we had a lesson in writing that day m hamel had new copies for us written in a beautiful round hand france alsace france alsace they looked like little flags floating everywhere in the school room hung from the rod of the top of our desks you ought to have seen how everyone set to work and how quiet it was the only sound was the scratching of the pens over the paper once some beetles flew in but nobody paid any attention to them not even the littlest ones who worked right on tracing their fish hooks as if that was french too on the roof the pigeons cooed very low and i thought to myself will they make them sing in german even the pigeons so now once the grammar lesson was over the teacher m hamel started with the lesson in writing and he had brought new copies for everyone present there and on top of that in very beautiful way it was written france alsace france alsace and it seemed to be like little flags of their country which was there all inside their school school and it seemed so beautiful and he just uh, you know distributed these copies to everyone present there and everyone started writing their lesson in french and everyone was working so uh, you know uh, uh, with so much of dedication and so much of side is like everyone present there they were just as if like they were completely immersed in doing the work that the teacher had given them and today unlike every other day even a little or any kind of disturbance was also not actually creating a disturbance for them for example uh, france is saying that at one point uh, there was bees who actually came to inside the class but no one paid attention to them in fact on the roof of their class he could hear the pigeons cooing that is the noise the not not the noise but the sound that the pigeons make that is cooing so even that was not attracting the attention of any child everyone present was completely doing their work right and then when he himself heard the cooing of the pigeons a very comical idea a very funny idea came to the little child's mind and that was that from tomorrow when the teacher a new german teacher is coming will they make the pigeons also coo and sing in the german language can it be possible now Whenever I looked up from my writing I saw M Hamel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing then at another as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little school room Fancy for 40 years he had been there in the same place with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him just like that only the desks and benches had been had been worn smooth the walnut trees in the garden were taller and the hope vine that he had planted himself twined about the windows to the roof how it must have broken his heart to leave it all poor man to hear his sister moving about in the room above packing their trunks 
for they must leave the country the next day so now even france was busy writing but he noticed one thing that every time you would just look up and you would see mr m hamel sitting in front of him motionless like he was just sitting at his chair and he was just gazing at one specific thing for a very long period of time and then he would just move somewhere else looking somewhere else and again spending a lot of time gazing at that particular thing so the child realized that probably you know it is so heartbreaking to see uh, such a thing for uh, the teacher because he had been at the same place in the same class from the past 40 years and uh, you know every time the set of students would change otherwise everything was the same his class was in front of him outside the window there was a garden where he actually had planted few trees by himself and now he was just looking at each and everything with giving it so much time as if he wanted to imprint all that in his heart and mind because from tomorrow he would be not he would not be able to come to this place where he had been from the past 40 years and then at the roof they could hear that m hamel sister was probably moving the trunks that is the big uh, uh, boxes metal boxes where probably she was packing the stuff as they had to leave the country that particular day but he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very last after the writing we had a lesson in history and then the babies chanted their ba bi bu bu down there at the back of the room old hosser had put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands spelled the letters with them you could see that he too was crying his voice trembled with emotion and it was so funny to hear him that we all wanted to laugh and cry ah oh, how well i remember it that last lesson so now after grammar after writing probably uh, the teacher also heard each and every lesson and now they were having a lesson in history and then that is the history of france the history of france the history of the french language probably they were talking about that and then the little babies that is the children there they were just chanting ba bi bai bu bu basically in language mein children are basically taught about how to speak like phonetics so here also uh, like ba what does it sound like so children were uh, practicing this rehearsing this and then he realized that that old hosser who was carrying a primer there uh, that is a book a basic book to learn language even he was doing that and his voice was trembling probably because he was also crying and he was also getting so much emotional that from tomorrow nothing like this is going to happen we would never be able to learn french like this our teacher is not going to be here and looking at that hearing uh, the hosser speak the children felt that as if they can cry and laugh at the same time and this at this point we say that the child say that ah oh, how well i remember it that last lesson that he just remembers like starting from the day you know when he was skipping was trying i was thinking that you know i should skip the day and probably because why he was scared he didn't uh, he had not done the homework of participle to actually coming to school late and then getting to know about uh, what his teacher told him and then the entire lesson the child remembers everything and therefore he says how well i remember it the last lesson all at once the church clock struck 12 then the angelus at the same moment the trumpets of the prussians returning from the drill sounded under our windows m hamel stood up very pale in his chair i never saw him look so tall my friends said he i i but something choked him he could not go on so probably while all these lessons in reading writing everything was going on it was 12 because at 12 the church clock always start ringing and when the church clock uh, uh, the church clock rang everyone realized that it was 12 and they could hear the prussian army coming back from their drill the drill that france has witnessed early in the morning while he was coming to school and that's exactly when m hamel the teacher who was sitting at his chair got up 
and tried to speak but he could not he was getting so emotional he was so disturbed he was so pain from inside that something was choking and he could just not say anything then he turned to the blackboard took a piece of chalk and bearing on with all his might he wrote as large as he could vive la france then he stopped and leaned his head against the wall and without a word he made a gesture to us with his hand school is dismissed you may go that so when he could not speak anything he actually turned around took the chalk with all his might with all his courage all his strength and he wrote these words on the blackboard vive la france and then he just put his head against the uh, board and he just uh, you know uh, with his hands gesture he just asked the class to leave that is to giving them the message that the school is mis- dismissed you may go and on this note the story ends where the child the people were told about the fact that from now on they were not allowed to read write learn their own language rather a new language would be taught and therefore the child says that i remember every part every me- i still have every memory of that last lesson right so here the story ends and now i'm pretty sure that you could relate well to how i introduced this topic for you now i am going to start with a little summary summarizing the story and then we are going to head to discuss the ncert questions followed by the previous years board examination questions that is the cbse questions so let's start with that 